Hey guys, Pankaj Ravel, founder of Carbon Law Group. I'm back here again today talking about letters of intent or LOIs. Now, these are really important documents that mark the beginning of a deal and clarifying the seriousness of the parties and entering into a contract or into a deal. As a lawyer, I see LOIs in all shapes and sizes. And one of the things that I get frustrated by oftentimes is the fact that I get LOIs after the parties have signed them and the terms are often ambiguous, unclear, they're missing a lot of elements. and now now lawyers have to discuss, okay, well, man, I wish our clients didn't agree to this from one side or the other and it could work out in your favor or not. But if there isn't the sufficient specificity in those LOIs, it can make moving to the full length agreement oftentimes a little bit more cumbersome, time consuming and potentially more expensive for clients. So I'm providing these insights as a lawyer who's dealt with a lot of LOIs, a lot of term sheets as a kind of a cautionary tale as well to make sure that when you're discussing those LOIs, try to get your lawyers involved earlier. I know it does cost a little bit more money, but it's better to have those lawyers involved earlier so you can avoid some of the costs down the line. Trust me, it is a worthwhile investment to have us involved early with the LOI to make sure the terms are precise and clear so we don't have to go back and rehash what were the intentions, what do the parties really mean while we're drafting the long-form agreement. So with that being said, a few areas in LOI you want to consider are first, what's the purpose? Okay, why are we even going into this contract? You want to kind of put it out there. Here's the purpose of the deal. And this kind of gets the basics basics of contract law. Is there a meeting of the minds? Do we have a shared purpose here? Are we on the same page as to why we want to get this deal done? What are the interests of the parties? Let's set that, let's get that out there and let's move from those interests because that's oftentimes how deals are made. We both have interests and we're both here to have our interests met. Maybe I want to make a lot of money from this deal. Maybe I want to buy this business and see it grow. Those are interests that are in some ways aligned, but also if I'm on the seller side, I'm trying to get as much money as possible. If I'm the buyer side, I'm trying to buy it for as little money as possible. So that's where you know we have to kind of work out some of these differences. But are your interests aligned? That's the first step. Next, define who the parties are. Who are we dealing with? Are we dealing with companies? Are we dealing with individuals? Are we dealing with 10 companies and subsidiaries? Really be specific on who these parties are because that's going to be really important due diligence as well. The next area is the proposed terms. What are the basic terms that we're talking about here? We want to talk about price. We want to talk about time. How much time do we have? We want to talk about due diligence. What are the conditions? Are the conditions precedent? Are there conditions subsequent to getting this deal done? Done. That means, are there issues that need to happen before this deal happens? Is there some license that needs to be addressed? Are there conditions that need to be met after? Like, you know, there needs to be a certain amount of revenue made. Do we want to have any holdback? Do we want to hold back some of the funds to make sure that the business continues to perform like you're representing it's performing? These are all important issues to address at that time. Is there a financing contingency? There's numerous issues depending on the type of deal we're talking about here, but really important to consider it and make it clear in the LOI. Here are the conditions. Here are the terms we're talking about. Here are the material elements of this deal that will make it work or won't make it work. Is this negotiation exclusive? Oftentimes, buyer will want to make sure that this is exclusive. So that means maybe also there's a deposit. Is there going to be a deposit to for this option to be exclusive? The seller may want that as well. And the seller may want that deposit non-refundable as soon as possible. Buyer, probably not. So again, where are your interests aligned? But also what will help you get this deal done? Those are big questions to answer depending on the type of deal you're doing. Next is all allies really should be non-binding because you do not want to be stuck with these terms without having the entire agreement fully hashed out and all the other terms considered. Every LOI should really be non-binding unless there's some extenuating circumstance. I highly encourage you against entering into a binding LOI because that now creates a lot of other problems because a lot of the other important terms, while they're maybe not as central to the agreement deal as maybe the terms of the LOI, need to be hashed out, need to be figured out, and we need to go through all the other scenarios in the long form before we can have a binding agreement that people are bound to and maybe you know there's a lot more money at stake um, when we have that long form APA or uh, asset purchase agreement or other other deal that we're talking about or office lease or it might be dealing with. The next thing you want to have is confidentiality. You want to make sure these terms are confidential. You don't want to make sure that these are not shared, whether you're the buyer or the seller, and it could be to your detriment if they're if they get out and now people know, oh well, this is the asking price. I'm gonna offer you offer a little bit more, to try to take away this deal. You want to make sure it's absolutely confidential. So these important negotiation points in terms are not shared. And lastly, you want to think about governing law. What laws are gonna govern this? Um, are we gonna have dispute resolution? What state is going to govern this really important early on in the agreement because it could be a conflict into, hey, I'm in California, you're in New York, which laws do we want to apply? Maybe New York laws are more favorable to the seller in some situations. Maybe some laws are more favorable to the buyer in other situations in California. So agreeing on, on the jurisdiction and the law is very important. So again, these are just some of the main points of the LOI. You want to think about you know, what's the purpose? What are the key terms? How do we handle disputes? What are, how are we handling the governing law? Confidentiality, exclusivity. Those are all areas 
is that you want to make sure you include in your LOI and make sure it's also non-binding. And lastly, try to get your, your lawyer involved early. I know that, you know, people want to say sometimes save money, but think of your lawyer as an investment. You know, whoever you work with, really, they should be an investment. They should be a trusted advisor that is giving you really good advice and helping these deals happen or save you from bad deals. I like to think of myself as a deal lawyer. I like to see deals happen and work with my clients and work with the other counsel collaboratively to make it happen. And I've been lucky that I've worked with a lot of great opposing counsel or, or counsel on the other side where we were able to collaborate and really work out some of these nuances that the clients didn't think about, like how do you calculate certain elements of a, of a deal? How do you calculate a certain number of patients in a deal that will determine the value of the deal? Those are all nuances that are not easy to, to, to figure out. When we work together, we come to a, a place where both parties can live with it and move the deal forward and hopefully get to DD. And then from there, ideally close the deal. So again, there's many steps to this process. The LOI is oftentimes the first step and one of the more important steps to make sure that deal is set up correctly and everything else runs smoothly after that. Hopefully this is helpful and this helps you draft better LOIs. My name is Pankaj Ravel, founder of Carbon Law Group.